Thank you very much for having me. My name is Sani Muhammad Shaaban, the Dambran Zazo and the Birdie of Kevi. Well, thank you. What my paper actually touched, especially with the reference of the gentleman of great memories, Sir Amadou Bello Sadona, is particularly on his foresight where he makes prohibitions at that most difficult period that the northern Nigeria found itself, having a new regional government grappling with lack of manpower, people who are supposed really to run and man the offices of the northern region offices. In terms of economic strength, the lack of capacity by its citizenry. So Amadi Bello Sadona of great memory was able to make an foresight in creating what we call Yaiki de Jahilchi at that time. In other words, creating some educational and vocational centers where people were trained on how to read and write and to be able to communicate with the rest of the world. In addition to that economic prohibition, sorry, educational position, he was able to make other economic provision by ensuring that the tools of craftsmanship, the tools of entrepreneurship that the northern Nigerians were known for, like agriculture, like tailoring, like animal husbandry, and any, you know, most of the basic traits at that initial stage when the white man came into the northern part of Nigeria and met us doing, were not neglected by Sir Amory Bello. And where are we today? Rather than complementing his efforts, rather than the you know, successive governments continue to enhance investing in such structures in the field of education, in the field of entrepreneurship, they were completely neglected. And what we work and find ourselves today is a catastrophic situation where there is very little references in terms of education. Students, their main target, their main uh, art of inspiration was to see what kind of grade they can have in their papers. Will it be the fantastic credits? Will it be the fantastic distinctions? And then what is the point of having distinctions as a graduate coming out with the first class and there is no job for you? And this is a situation not only the northern Nigeria found itself, this is a situation that Nigeria found themselves. So I'm, I, I make references to such circumstances where we need to go back to the drawing board. We need to not to have only the practical you know, uh, for, you know, educational systems, but we have to complement them with some practical approach into how those students will keep chunking out year in, year out with some trainings, with some arts, with some craftsmanship that they could be able to sustain themselves. Could it be photography? Could it be in the field of tolerance? Could it be in the field of even agriculture, which is the number one thing? A hungry mouth is an angry mind. So. The fact that our team youth are vastly unemployed today, the fact that there are so many mouths to be fed, the fact that so many of our institutions were dilapidated and decayed, there are no visit to them. Some of them were established 50, 60 years ago, and yet there is virtually very little in terms of maintenance. That is what is giving birth to the social unrest and the security challenges we are having today. Most of these youths that will barely survive will have no cause than to continue to find ways that they can sustain themselves. And uh, with little talking, different kind of notions, different kind of doctrine were inculcated into their brain, be it religious, be it tribal, be it whatever. And why we have, you have all the crises, you go to Maiduguri, the Boko Haram is there. You, call, you go to Binui and Nasarawa, there is a tribal attack. You go to Plateau, there is a religious attack. You come to uh, my own state, Kaduna, you have the banditry. You move to Sokoto, the kidnapping, almost all, all kinds of evils and social unrest. So what neglected this is the simple fact that what the late Sir Amadi Bello Sadona was able to establish rather than the subs, you know, sub successive leadership continuing in his path, expanding and complementing and even modernizing and bringing what the rest of the world, the advanced world, the advanced technologists are doing. What we, rather than what we have today is 
complete neglect. Feel free, people who are mostly leaders who are interested in lining up their pockets, and then all they look is their children, their friends, and of course their immediate families. And this is unfortunate. So this is most of it in a nutshell what my paper proposed today in terms of that uh, social arrest and why we find ourselves where, uh, today in, in, in Nigeria and, and it is a very unfortunate situation. Your question, it has some dimensional effects, two or three dimensional effects. Of course, every politician has an ambition. And if every human being, the normal human being in life shall have an ambition. You cannot just be, just anything goes wrong, no. A very serious-minded individual should be able to be a focused individual, should be able to have a program. Of course, Sani Shaban is a politician. Of course, Sani Shaban is a traditional title holder. Of course, Sani Shaban is an industrialist. I'm a business person. So, I don't know what dimension they took, but if you culminate all the three, my educational background in terms of whatever I do, in terms of helping tertiary and other advanced you know, uh, institutions around my immediate community and by extension some other institutions, I run a lot of scholarships. A lot of students really benefit out of it. And if you come to in terms of uh, empowering the youth, I created a lot of opportunities for the youth, both in and even out of my state. In fact, across other neighboring countries, where most of these youths survive and live in what we created. There are small cottage industries. We make sure that we don't only get them to be trained, but we create an opportunities for them to stand on their feet and have their own little industries. So there, are, uh, I, there are quite a number that are today in the fashion world. There are quite a number today that they are creating the IT, you know, in terms of this telecommunication, internet providing system, Wi-Fi. Lots of youth, we make sure that we create an opportunities for them to do that. And uh, I, I, I am not the one that says, I want to be the governor of my state. You understand? What I'm doing, I'm not occupying an executive office for me to be able to do that. I look at the blessing that God Almighty Allah has given me, and I feel in what way I should be able to reach out. For me to be where I am today, for me to be captain of so many industries, both in and out of Nigeria, I know what I went through. And it has not been easy with life. So I felt I need to give back. That child that can barely feed himself, that child that walked six kilometers to go to school, primary school, and come back. Today he is a captain of so many international conglomerates. So the best thing that child can do is to recognize that it is only God that gives him such an opportunity. It is not because he comes from this home or he's a child of this home. Opportunities, once is given to a talent and focused mind, only God knows what is going to be tomorrow. So I will continue to assist. I will continue to give. If Allah give me 100, I will enjoy 10% of that 100. You can be rest assured 90 goes to humanity. Since you use, chooses to use the word define love, let me handle it first and foremost before we go further. Sincerely, I'm so much in love with my mother. I'm so much in love with my parents, both the father and the mother. We have, we have seen it all in terms of difficulties. We have seen it all. We have tested what is called poverty. And out of that, you know, ramshackle life, they are able to have what they have today in me. So without giving birth to me, I wouldn't be able to be where I am. Without their nurturing care and their trust and confidence in me that I can make it. And they toil day in, day out, calm rain, calm shine. They make sure that I, I have the basic education that I need. They make sure that they encourage me, they never discourage me. After Amadivale University, they were clapping and happy that yes, our son has made it. And now he is going to start feeding us and looking after us. I say, no, I'm not yet done. I had an admission to go to Southwest London College, it was a London School of Accountancy also at admission on that. I choose to continue to pursue my career as an accountant and they encouraged me to do that. So here I am. My father is late almost 27 years now. My mother is late almost six years now. So I always cherish what they went through. So to be able to name the center as Ushaban, Center for Entrepreneurship and IT in Amadou Valley University, 
I think I make no mistake. Because for every building, there has to be the first foundation. My parents, especially the mother that took me nine months and went through what she went through, she deserves to continue to linger in the memory. And I want to leave something behind, even if I'm late. And that thing is for the name of my parents to continue to prosper. I cherish them, I love them, may their soul rest in peace. I am always willing and ready to serve people of Kaduna State. Not only people of Kaduna State, Nigeria and humanity as a whole. It doesn't have to be in any category, whether it is governor or as a normal private citizen. You understand? If the people deem fit that I should come and carry the torch, why not? I represented my constituency in the area in the Federal House of Reps. And uh, the, the, the glory and the successes are there for everyone to testify. So if those people that I represented, by extension, decided to invite other parts of the citizenry of Kaduna State, that I shall come and assume the mantle of the leadership of Kaduna State, it would be my great pleasure to do that. But it is only time that will tell. But in terms of how prepared, I can tell you that yes, I've been prepared since yesterday. Well, if you remove uh, the poverty line and give it 70% of the root cause of all the social unrest we are having in the country, like I earlier mentioned, poverty generates almost every other thing. It's an evil. And no generation, no leadership, no culmination of leadership should allow poverty to prosper in its domain. Because you should try as much as possible to program and make use of whatever available resources you have, including the manpower, the humans you have, like the way China and India are using their population to continue to dominate the economic world today. Once we are able to attack squarely the issues of poverty, all what you are calling this social arrest will not be there. What goes to the 30% I can assure you it's political. The best friends of the Fulanis, before even the coming of the white man, if you go to the central part of Nigeria, the Tib, the Idomas, you understand, are the Fulanis. They name their children, they intermarry. There is intermarriage. They never see. If you know of the history of let Wazir, you know, Wazir and Jama'a, let Aliyu Muhammad, a blessed memory. He was given a traditional title by the Thief. He's a Fulani person from Kaduna State, from Jama'a in precise. Only God knows his relationship at what it transpires. I went to school with a lot of thieves in London. We see ourselves as Northerners. They are Christians and Muslims. We speak the common language Hausa. All through our stays in United Kingdom, we don't see ourselves as this coming from this religion or this part of the country or that part of the country. I was in the United States for five years. My best friends happens to come from Binwe and Niger State, the, the Nupi and the Thieves. And we, don't, we have never looked upon ourselves as separate. All we do, what brought us to that country, what can we get back home with some level of integrity. So all these things we are saying are nothing but politics. And the politicians are thriving on the poverty that is being stricken today. And they are, they are, they are, they are, they are really germinating a lot of and creating havoc and social unrest. But I will assure you one thing. I have high hope for Nigeria. A lot of the young men that are coming out, a lot of the young men that are privileged to really know what is happening in the rest part of the world, believe that all these things are gimmicks. Those all politicians, those all traditionalists, those all leadership, they don't want to let go. They have taken their time, they've enjoyed their time, they have come to use and enjoy the time of their children. In fact, they want to extend even to the time of their grandchildren. That's why all kinds of excuses were being paid to this youth. And that is what is giving birth to all these social arrests. But I, I believe the lies are catching up with them. Because 
I don't know. Why should I look at somebody? When the rest of the world they are going, you know, uh, skyscraping in times of going to the moon, in times of uh, electronic investment, and the, the whole world has become a global village. You pick your phone, you are having friends in Asia, you are communicating, you are trading, you are doing businesses. What more of your immediate neighbor that is close to you? Who knows you are ill? When you are sick, he knows about it. If you are doing well, he knows about it. By my religion, Islam, what I am taught is I should be my brother's keepers, my immediate neighbor. And what my religion tells me, that my neighbor, it has never defined a religion or language. It's, it says my immediate neighbor. So if you look at your, the next house, who is your neighbor? The next street, from the next street to the next town, from the next town to the next state, we are all neighbors. So if you are to go by the teachings of your religion, you obviously find that there is no how you can call yourself a complete Muslim without going by the teachings of what God says. And that is how it should be. So knowledge and the fear of God is being kept aside. Interest, greed, selfishness is what is prospering. But thank God we cannot continue to slaughter ourselves as animals. With time, I think the wake up call is around the corner. Nigeria will be great. Nigeria will be united. And I have full hope with the kind of youth we are having of today. Believe me sincerely, some leaders will come and speak even the language they say to hell with the language we will no longer speak that language we want to relate with our brothers and that's how it should be so i believe nigeria has a, a tremendous opportunity to be one of the best and the greatest among the committee of nations <laughs>